Just now, we saw that carboxylic acids are quite useful and that they play a significant role in our lives. So, what is a carboxylic acid and how do we recognize one? A carboxylic acid is simply a compound that has this carbonyl group, which is attached to an OH group on the one side of the carbon atom and a carbon chain on the other. This carbon chain could either be an aromatic ring or an aliphatic chain. Here, this as a whole is referred to as the carboxyl group. When we attach an alkyl group here, this becomes the general formula for a carboxylic acid. Often, we abbreviate this group into these two acceptable forms. Okay, so there is a carbonyl group and there is an OH group. So these compounds should exhibit properties of both these groups, right? Well, here's the thing though, they don't. Take a look at this compound. This is acetic acid. As you can see, we have shown the bond strengths of all the different possible bonds which are involved here. And surprisingly, the strongest bond happens to be the OH bond and the weakest happens to be the carbon-carbon bond. Yet, there are very few reactions of acetic acid which involve the cleaving or breaking of this carbon-carbon bond. And most of the characteristic reactions of this compound do involve the breaking of the OH bond, which happens to be the strongest of them all. But why? If you notice, we haven't shown the lone pair on this oxygen atom. Now, what do we have here? A lone pair and then a single bond immediately followed by the carbonyl pi bond. So, there is a possibility of one of the lone pairs moving in while the electrons from the carbonyl pi bond move to this oxygen atom. We are familiar with this, which is called conjugation and it does impart a partial double bond character to this OH bond. In fact, this is why carboxylic acids behave like acids in the first place. Take a look at this acid-base reaction. When the acid loses its proton, we get water and the carboxylate ion. X-ray crystallography reveals that both the carbon-oxygen bond lengths in this anion to be equal, which is 136 picometer, now, if you look at this value, it is bang in the middle of what would be an oxygen-carbon double bond at 123 picometers and a carbon-oxygen single bond at 143 picometers. This is because the negative charge is spread out equally over the two oxygen atoms. Take a look at this. The overall actual structure of the anion may be represented this way. This structure reveals two things. First the equal bond lengths of the two carbon-oxygen bonds and second, the delocalization or the spreading out of the negative charge. If you want the resonance structures, look at these. The delocalization arrow tells us that both localized forms contribute to the actual real structure. To keep learning with such engaging videos, download Baiju's The Learning App today.